Listen. Welcome to Chanel's reality. Sis is getting ready. I don't want to choose. Okay, let me turn this off before I get in trouble. Oh, Lordy, hold on. Okay, stop. Stop, 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 stop. How do I stop it? Wait. Ah! <laughs> okay, Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to Chanel's reality. See, stuff just be happening, okay? You know, listen. Welcome, everybody. Here's the thing. So this wig that I have on that I pulled out the box from somewhere. Listen, I was trying to blow dry. <laughs> Listen, I was trying to blow dry it. And and it burnt right here. <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't know I could really burn the hair. Like, listen, I do know you could burn the hair, but I mean this, this listen, this wig has 22 lives, okay? Just just understand. This wig, this one right here got 22 lives, sis. But anyways, tonight we're going to um we're going to recap the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and all their shenanigans. Listen, I'm putting a challenge on myself because clearly I talk a lot, right? So I'm like, okay, I need to stick to the stories. I need to stick to what happened and don't be going off on a tangent because I just want everybody to, to have the entire scope of what's happening on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I am in the making. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to get my life together. I don't know what y'all doing in this life, but I'm trying to get mine together. All right. And then, why is my husband trying to, why are you trying, listen, when you get married, ladies, let me tell you something. The thing you need to put in your vows that's most important is the temperature of the house. Because these ninjas, the way these ninjas are set up, why are you trying to freeze me to death? I'm anemic. I, I, I can't. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. I mean, I got to have a whole entire, um, what is this thing called? Heater. Right here in my face. Like, legit. Look. Look. Legit in my face because my husband's trying to kill me via the winter. Okay, and that's not gonna give me good sound, so I probably have to turn it off. See, watch, I'm gonna turn it off. All right, so now we can get started. Now that I've been through all the shenanigans, I didn't listen to It's the V Vegan, my whole vibe, right? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the 80s babies. I'm an 80s baby, I'm a Leo, you know, and uh, I'm just trying to get my life together. So today. Part of my life getting together. Oh, again, welcome to Chanel's Reality. My name's Chanel. I uh, am a baby YouTuber, content creator. I'm a, I'm a baby. I'm a little virgin baby, okay? And so I need everybody to support me by liking the video, um, sharing the video, subscribing to my channel. All of these things are good for me. It, it's, a e it's a free and easy way for you guys to, to help support my channel and, and help grow it. So, like I said, we're going to talk tonight about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and their shenanigans, okay? Um, but before we get into it, my channel, please, again, hit that like button real quick if you guys are just not coming into the room. Um, my channel is about, really, I would say gossip. I'm not really a big gossip person, but I do have sectors of gossip that I enjoy. I'm more of a cerebral being, um, but... I do love a good reality show. I do love, um, I love some celebrities. I'm not one of those girls that's like, oh, so-and-so bought this, so I'm going to buy it. Like, I'm not a person that would be, shout out to Rihanna, love her, do, love her. But I'm not a person that just because I like Rihanna and like her music, I'm just going to go buy her Savage, you know, underwear or her Savage. She, she, listen, Rihanna is, I think they said she's, you know, worth a billion dollars or something like that. So sis is, she doing something right, clearly. But I'm just not that girl. I'm not. God made me an original. So I don't see the purpose of being, being a copy. Call me whatever, but it is what it is. But I think Beyonce and I think Rihanna's and all of the beautiful women in the entertainment business. Shout out to y'all because I know it can be easy, but I'm just not a drone. I'm not going to just buy something simply because someone made it. I just haven't been that girl. I'm also not the girl to get intimidated because what if, I never understand this. And this is my only little tangent I'm going to go off on. But you know how you'll hear people on TV, they'll say things like, Oh, you know, you know, we have all these beauty standards for girls and it makes them have low self-esteem. I'm with Cat Williams. Cat Williams said self-esteem is esteem of yourself. OK. And all I'm saying is I don't feel bad about myself because Rihanna's beautiful, you know, or because she has a banging body or whatever. I don't feel bad about myself because of that, because I still feel like I'm the baddest she's walking. Let's be clear, you know. Um, but I could appreciate how beautiful she is. But I don't have low self-esteem because 
she's a size three or four or whatever she is or zero. I don't know. I don't have low self-esteem because she's that, right? Because I aspire to be me. And just a better me. That's it. Not not her. But shout out to Rihanna because love you. You the bad girl. She's, Rihanna is one of those um, people that you'll learn on my show. She's just one of those people that, um, she's one of those celebrities that I'm just like, they can do what the hell they want. Oprah's another one. It just is what it is. There's certain people I just give them a pass. Like, like listen, let her do what she wants. I don't care. Um, okay, so this is the recap of the Re Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um... Season 13, episode 16. Listen, y'all. I don't even drink like that. But the day I didn't have, listen, I got something called, uh, shout out to Gabby Valadaria. She introduced me to this because I don't know how to drink. It's called Amaretto Sour. But I, I went out to lunch with one of my new Scorpio friends, which I'm not, I, listen, the Scorpios keep trying to be my friend. I don't understand it. I'm like, no, we're not supposed to be, like, we the opposite. Just saying, because Scorpios go from a, uh, what? Zero to 10 in 0.2 seconds, and I ain't got time, okay? Um, but no, so I went out with one of my new Scorpio friends, and she was just like, you should get an amaretto. Uh, so this is an amaretto sour. Oh, amaretto sweet at some place that we went to. And I loved it. I was like, what has this been my whole life? But I don't really drink like that. But I need this because today, listen, it's been a day. I'm going to just say that. All right, so Beverly Hills, season 13. Uh, episode 16. I have a little notes over here. So I'm going to give you guys a rundown of all of the things that happened and then I'll just kind of talk about what I thought about things. So and let's see. So Kyle, so this is, I'm not going to go in order, okay? Because in order would start with Sutton and her horse and all that and I don't love Sutton, but I don't really care about that if I'm just being honest. Um, but I will talk a little bit about it later. So this actually happens at the end, I feel like. Or no, maybe this is at the beginning. Kyle and Marie still are talking about their relationship. And Kyle is doing this whole song and dance about, uh, let's see. She's doing a whole song and dance about, like, I guess she's trying to say, you know, she's not happy in her marriage. And, you know, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I keep saying it because it's just real and it's just true. Kyle is a king cobra. She's just a whole king cobra. She, and that to me, is she's just a, one of the worst snakes there is, you know? And she, and the worst part of, the reason that make what makes Kyle so bad, in my opinion, and I don't hate you, Kyle, because I'm not that girl. I don't just sit on the internet and just hate on people for no reason. I don't like Kyle for very valid reasons, okay? And I can count them up. And I think later I'm going to list some people off. And these are the reasons that I don't like her. Um, but there are things about Kyle I do like. Um, but... I say she's a King Cobra just for this small, well, there's a million reasons, but mainly because Kyle was able, I feel like, to fool a lot of us because I can really kind of spot a liar and a fake really easily. But when she came onto this show, she just seemed like, you know, a good mom. She seemed like, I mean, a um, good wife, like very supportive. She seemed like, you know, because her sister Kim was on the show at the time too. And, you know, Kim was struggling with her issues that she had. And it just felt like, oh, my God, she just seemed so relatable. But as the seasons moved on, and the other thing, too, I didn't, I think I didn't catch on to it so much, too, because we had Lisa Vanderpump, who, in my opinion, was the bigger snake. And not in a bad way, but Lisa just understood the assignment, you know, and she just was slippery, but she had a whole bunch of money. She's beautiful. She's living the life. She has her husband who loves her and is her ride or die. And it's just so, like, aspirational, you know, on some level. Um, and so I feel like Lisa was able to distract us without her shenanigans behind the scenes. Cause she was like, to me, the super producer and snake and all, but she was a super producer in my opinion. And, um, and so because Lisa was all, always up here doing this, I didn't notice how terrible of a person Kyle was until, like I said, season after season, it was probably around season six that I really started being like, Oh, okay. I see what you are. Um, so anyways, episode, uh, Part of the episode talks of, you have Kyle and Mauricio, which is Kyle's husband. And they're in like their little kitchen net, like bar area. And they're discussing their relationship. And Kyle is saying that, you know, she, okay, here's the thing. To me, Kyle is hiding something. I don't know why, because her whole storyline this season, which is, this is the first time in 13 years, Kyle has had a storyline be literally about her marriage and the downfall of it she's never had that she's always had really good edits where it's like you don't even see Kyle like 
grunt at her husband, look at him crazy. He doesn't do the same for her. Like, it just seemed like a really good match. And so this season, that's her storyline, you know, the, the downfall of her marriage. At least that's the way it's being presented, right? So I feel like I'm going to need a, uh, look, I'm going to need to put this on because I have my hair. It, listen, and it's not even my hair, but it won't stay. Listen, I'm trying to, oh, hold, please. <laughs> oh, please, because my hair is doing the most. I don't know what's happening. Okay, look, let me. Hold on, let's see. Put my glasses on top of it. Is that a little bit better? Okay, 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 okay. See, the wig don't want to act right. Listen, it's, this is, see, no, no, my ear, now my ear looks big and janky. This is not okay. Oh, Jesus. Why my hair don't want to let me be great? Listen, my hair said no, you can't go all the way behind the ear. Okay, fine, whatever. Listen, okay. So, so like I said, Kyle hasn't really, to me, Kyle hasn't really talked about her relationship in any bad way at all. Like they've never had a fight or anything. So this season, it's kind of like, almost like breaking news, you know, and it's sad. And it's like I said, as much as I think she's a co King Cobra and she is, I don't, you know, I don't get the happiness or joy out of her um, having difficulties in her marriage because I'm married, you know, and I've been married for almost 18 years and a few months. And so I get it. It's not going to always be easy. It's not going to always be. There's there's going to be peaks and valleys. It just is what it is. See, this is why I need a new wig. See what I'm saying? So like my video. So YouTube. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so, OK, so what I really got from that scene to me was that what Kyle is saying is going on in her marriage and why she's mad and whatever else. It just doesn't ring true. There's something else going on because Kyle basically is saying that, you know, she doesn't like the fact that her husband's always traveling and, you know, she wants to be at home living in the woods and, you know, with the wilderness and her dogs and a canoe. That's what Kyle is saying that she wants. And I don't believe her, <laughs> but that's what she says. Because, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I don't believe Kyle when she says that. That's what she wants. But, you know, to each his own. But it's hard to believe Kyle just because she's just fake. Sorry, Kyle. I'm just calling what it is. Um, you go through these last three seasons or six seasons and you tell me where real is and I'll, you know, I'll give it back to you, sis, but I don't see real. So the thing, the problem that I have with Kyle saying that is that, <sighs> Kyle, if your husband is traveling too much and he's building a multi-million dollar company and you can fly around the world on private jets, get your ass on a plane and fly around the world with your husband on jets. I don't see the, I don't understand the problem. Like, you know what I mean? So to me, that's a fixable problem. It's certainly not a, a issue where you say, I'm going to throw my marriage of almost 30 years in the trash. And I'm not a girl that's going to tell you stay in a marriage, you know, because, you know, society says you're supposed to. And, you know, just I'm not that girl. If you're not happy, move on, move along. This life is one of the longest things you do. My dog only saying something because I'm on this thing. If I wasn't on here, he wouldn't say nothing. See? Anyway. Um, life is the longest thing you would do, but you don't want to do it miserable. And I just don't agree with just staying in a miserable relationship where you're not growing, no one loves you, or you don't feel love, you don't feel appreciated. I just, I don't subscribe to that. I'm not a drone, like I said before. So I just don't believe her. There has to be more. Nobody is throwing away a relationship with the guy that you got with when you say he didn't have anything, he went and got a real estate license, and then, I don't know, 27 years later, y'all are filthy rich and famous. It's not because he's traveling. He's been traveling the whole entire time that you've been on this show. So let's just be very clear. So that's not it, Kyle. So try again. So anyway, they talk about that. And and the other two, two things, she says that um, she doesn't want to stay in a relationship that if her daughters were in this relationship, she wouldn't tell them to stay. So to me, like I said, the old married lady, that says there's more to this story. That's what that says to me. And if you're wondering what my shirt says, it says, hold on, let me overthink this. That's for all the Virgos out there. <laughs> Stop me when I'm lying. Okay, anyway. Um, I just think Kyle's checked out of her marriage. That's what I think. 
That's what I think. I, I don't know. Because if you look at that scene, she's like, he seems like he's authentically trying to at least put on a front for America. Like, you know, my wife's great and we're going to figure this out. And Kyle is just like, everything he, everything he says, it's almost like she just picks at it. He's like, oh, you know, we're getting older. We're about to be empty nesters. No, we're not. We're not empty nesters. It's just like, girl, is that really a reason to fight about something? I can give you some stuff to fight about. That ain't it. Okay. Things that things you should fight with your husband about is cheating, not having a job, having no ambition, not taking care of the kids, not helping you with the kids, being disrespectful, beating on you. These are reasons, Kyle, to like pick at your husband, really to get a new husband. If, if, if that was my situation, I'm getting a new husband or, or I'll be alone. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. She, her, she ain't got time. Okay. I'm not wasting my life with somebody who doesn't respect me. I'm just not doing it. I, I can't. So this whole, I'm going to leave because I want to live in the woods and have a canoe and go hiking, you know, with the mountain lions and my dog. I'm not saying that isn't what she wants to do. I'm saying that isn't the reason that you, you know, no longer, that, that you get divorced from your husband who clearly, at least what y'all put on TV, loves you and cares about you. I, I, I don't buy it. So... I'm going to go through everything else that happens in the show. And then, like I said, I'll go back and we'll talk about it. So PK and Dorit, they have this FaceTime. PK's in London again. I don't know why she cares. I, 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 I've I never understood why Dorit was ever even with PK. I never understood it because who? Okay, I'm not going to do that because that's not nice. But if you get me, you get me. I don't get it. Um. So on this FaceTime call... Uh, like I said, he's in London, she's in America, and she's talking about how Mother's Day is coming up, and um, they're having, Anne-Marie's having this Mother's Day brunch, and basically, the reason is like, you need to come home for Mother's Day, and PK is being a, he's being, BK, he's being PK, and he's, uh, basically, he tells her, he tells her, he says something like, you know, Mother's Day isn't a big deal over here in London, and so we don't really care about it, and you know, to reach She's like kind of trying to check him and be like, well, it doesn't matter what it is over there. You need to get home. I'm your wife and, you know, you need to celebrate me as, as, a, as, as a mother. I just don't even understand his. That's a fight you don't even need to have with your wife. Like that's like why? Again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a losing fight. You're not going to win because no one you talk to is going to agree with you. And even if the guys in your whatever group agree with you, they're not going to say that to their wife. Let's be clear. And if their wife looks like Dorit, I can't stand Dorit half the time. But she's beautiful, in my opinion. She knows how to dress. She's styled to the team. Like, what are we doing? First of all, that's why I'm like, why is she with him? It doesn't make sense. So he must have, listen, his dick must shoot diamonds or something because I cannot understand. <laughs> no shade. But, you know, I mean, listen, I like PK sometimes. He can be funny or whatever. But he's just, like, when he said... He told Erica, he was like, when Erica was telling them when her husband was in the hospital and something something was wrong with his head, and, they, and Erica was like, don't fix his brain, fix the fucking ankle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. For people who watch Beverly Hills, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because she also said that her son got into a wreck and flipped his car five times because it was snowing in California. Where, Erica? I'll wait. Stop it. Anyway, so they have that little banter back and forth. And PK is like, but also you're not my mom. And Dory's like, well, I'm the mother of your kids. And I just, listen, I'm not having that fight with you. If you don't see the value of a woman creating a whole human being, I'm going to need you to get, you, listen, again, Dory, come to the front. He not worth it, girl. He don't understand. He haven't, he's never created a life. I cannot. See, this is what I'm saying. Why am I putting it with this? That, this is one of those reasons. And it's not a big reason, but it's one of those reasons why I'm not staying with you if you, I can't, if you can't respect me, like I can't, that's, that's not even a, a, a situation you should even argue, period. We are the givers of life. Be clear. Yes, you guys as men help. I'm not saying you don't, but you're not walking around pregnant. So stop. What you need to say is yes, dear, whatever you need, <laughs> whatever you need. Um, let's see what else happens. Um, she still doesn't know when PK is coming home. I, I don't necessarily believe the whole PK and Dorit getting a, getting a, getting a divorce thing. It just kind of feels very convenient to me, but I'm not going to totally say it's not accurate because there's been a few seasons that have passed by where Dorit has kind of hinted at PK, like you will end up in divorce court. 
And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I do not, as much as I can't stand some of the things that Dorit does and how obnoxious she can be at times, I don't disagree with her. And I don't think that she would stay. Be very clear. I do not think that Dorit would stay. Like if Dorit really felt like her husband was, I don't think, I don't think she would stay. But I think like many women who have children, it is, it is really, I think, one of the most difficult tasks and decisions to say, I'm going to give up on this marriage or this relationship because I really want my children to be able to grow up with a family intact, you know? And so to me, I always say it's two types of people that come to that decision, right? Usually a person who grew up with both of their parents and they had a great upbringing, right? So you want that for your child. You want your, you know how close you were with your dad or whatever, right? So you want that for your family and your children. And then there are the, the school of people who didn't grow up with a good father. He was an asshole or he wasn't around, whatever the case may be, right? And so for those reasons, you want your children to have a good dad. And so I get it. And so, and then too, it's, I think it's hard to try to like figure everything out. And then who is this new, how about who this woman around my child? <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, um, and listen, this is, I'm going to just say this for those who, haven't been following uh, Beverly Hills all this time, you probably won't get it. But <clears throat> excuse me, if you, you should go back, if you decide you want to go back and watch it from the beginning, I think, I forget what season it is, but it's season seven, I think maybe where Dorit arrives on, on, uh, on Beverly Hills. And um, Dorit at that time was the best Dorit I feel like she's ever been on this show. And here's why. Because I feel like she didn't need, she she didn't have a reason to feel guarded in what she said. Or she didn't, in my opinion, feel like she needed an ally, right? So she was free to kind of just say whatever Dorit was thinking. And I think over these years, Dorit has kind of silenced herself a little more and more and more. And it just went into overdrive. I feel like when Teddy and them, they all became the Force Force Fox, whatever they were, um, and it's like, I feel like Lisa, Lisa Renna, shout out to Lisa Renna, because you did help us make, help them make great TV. You're a villain and, and a terrible friend, but you did make good TV. I ain't gonna lie. I give it to you. I don't like you, would never want you to be my friend, but you made good TV. Um, I feel like Lisa Renna was like, you know, that movie, The Little Mermaid, where Ariel gives her voice to the evil octopus lady or whatever, and... So she can't really say anything. I feel like that's Dorit. Dorit has given her has given her voice to Lisa Renna, who's no longer on the show. And she can't, there's nothing for her to say. And I'm just, I feel bad, you know? But listen, this is the Dorit that I liked. And y'all could just put it, put it in the comments if you agree with me, okay? So Dorit and Erica in the cast, they were on this boat. I feel like in Hong Kong, it was a really kind of gritty, grimy boat that I would never want to be on. And I don't understand why the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills would be on it, but okay. Maybe it was on Groupon. Maybe they got... I don't know what Brand, what what Andy and Bravo and them are doing. But Dorit was on that boat and Erica was saying to Dorit, she said to Dorit, they were having some sort of back and forth argument. And mind you, if you watch all the seasons, a lot of these women seem like they're afraid of Erica for whatever reason. Probably with the exception of, uh, I don't think Lisa Renna was, ever, not Lisa Renna, um, Lisa Vanderpump. I don't think Garcelle is. Or has ever been afraid of Erica. Because Garcelle told her last season or season before. She was like, Erica, we don't have to be friends. <laughs> and I'm here for it, bitch. Okay? Um, but there was, I feel like a lot of people, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but they are intimidated by her. People that come on this show. Uh, Teddy, now they besties. I'm like, Teddy, girl, she read you for filth at that table and told you, don't you ever say that she's a liar. And you just, okay, I can't. <laughs> Teddy. I'd never disliked Teddy until she got off the show. It was just like, girl, you are so thirsty. Um, but Dorit's on that. This is the the Dorit, if you decide to watch this, sis. Okay. On Chanel's reality. Shout out to everybody on Chanel's reality. At me. Follow me on TikTok. Facebook. No, I'm not on Facebook. I used to be. But Facebook is for old people and I'm almost 50. So I guess I'll be getting on there soon. Um, TikTok, Instagram. Oh, and um, Twitter. Follow me. Um, but anyway, so back to the boat. So Dorit is on the boat and Erica and they're going back and forth. And Erica said to Dorit, you are dying. Or how does, I don't know how to do Erica's accent. Cause see how I have a smile on my face. Erica never really smiles like that. But she said, you are dying for my friendship or something for her attention. And Dorit says, honey, <laughs> shout out to Dorit. 
the reset. I got time, bitch. Okay. Understand. Um, the reset says, uh, what did she say? Honey, don't flatter yourself. <laughs> That's such a white person read. Shout out to all my white watchers. Love y'all. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. Let's see. I think it's, is it like this? It's like this. Oh, something like that. Anyway. Uh, she said, don't flatter yourself, honey. Um, and then let's see. Oh, she told, what did she tell? She said, she told, she told, so Dorit tells, uh, Erica, don't you effing flatter yourself. And then she says, Dorit says, you're not that interesting. You're not fun. You're not nice at all. You're cold as ice and stoic. Tell me what the, would I have to, what did she say? Be vying, why the heck would I be vying for your attention? That's the Dorit. See, this is what's wrong with these cheap wigs. Anyway, that's the Dorit that we need. We need her. The lady that had a voice, her. Okay? Go get your voice from the, the evil octopus lady from the Little Mermaid. Go get your voice, sis. Come back to the table. Is this Yeti in y'all? Look, what is this? What is that? Yeti, shout out to y'all. These cups only work for about three or four years, okay? It still works, but it's just, it's not as good as it was. That's the Dorit we want. Because this Dorit that don't hold Erica accountable for anything. It's, for whatever reason, stuck up cows seemingly permanently. I just, I don't get it. Um, And here's the other thing. Because like I said, I don't understand why these people seemingly, some of them, most of them, are afraid of Erica. I don't get it. But I, I, I think, I, I say to myself, when will they learn? But listen, I've been thinking about it. This is when these people are going to learn about Erica. Let me tell you when it's going to happen, okay? Mark my words, okay? You heard it first here on Chanel's Reality, okay? I'm Chanel. Um, they're going to learn, in my opinion, when Erica writes that tell-all book, okay? It's going to be way better than that Diamonds and Rosé, whatever it is, whoever wrote that book. Yeah, that, that's when they're going to learn because I can guarantee Erica doesn't have any loyalties. Erica is a, you know how they said Todd was a, was a, a, an opportunist, which I never really got that from Todd, because plus he's also my Leo brother, and Leos are we we not those people. So there's that. Um, we will take an opportunity and run with it, but we're not a person. We're not people who step on others to get to the top and have no remorse about it. Erica doesn't care. She's still mad. Listen, she mad at all the people. This is how you know someone, in my opinion, has evil narcissistic tendencies. Erica is still on this show right now saying to her co-stars that she really wants an apology from them because she, so the government, and I'm going to give you the shorter story. So the government basically said that the court found that Erica, the earrings, these million dollar earrings or whatever that she bought or Tom bought for her, whatever it is, that originally they, they said, you know what, um, this, these earrings were purchased with the victim's money from Tom Girardi's lawsuits and stuff. That's a whole nother thing. I don't have time in this show to talk to you about it. But they basically said that the judge, and you know, they won this, this, this battle about these earrings. And so if you give the earrings back or they win the earrings or they can find out or prove that the earrings were purchased with victims money, which is not Erica's money or Mr. Girardi's money, then, you know, she has to give them back, right? To, to whoever, right? The victims or, or the people that handle the money or whatever. And so this is how you know, Erica, in my opinion, this is how you know you're dealing with a vindictive, narcissistic, selfish, completely self-absorbed person. Erica has decided after the court says, yes, we know that or we feel as though enough evidence has been presented that these earrings, it's proven that these earrings were purchased with uh, money from these people's tragedies that they won via the lawsuit that. Um, Erica's ex-husband or husband um, filed against whomever, right? Erica went and her and her attorneys and said, we're going to appeal. <laughs> and here's the thing. I'm not saying people shouldn't appeal something, but there are certain limits. This is not your money. You know it isn't your money, Erica. Let's just be a hundred, girl. And I'm not saying that you should walk around as a victim and sad and people should beat you up on the internet and bully you. I'm not saying that. I'm going to keep it a book over here on Chanel's reality. And all I'm saying is this. You didn't earn the one point whatever million dollars that purchased those earrings. Let's be 100% clear. 
Okay? You didn't earn that. Meaning you did not, it didn't come from Erica Jane, you know, uh, what is her songs? Whatever her two or three songs that she had out there, that one of them I did like, um, how many fucks did I give or something like that? Um, she had a few songs that I was just kind of like jamming and happy for her because who's a pop star like 48 years old? But Erica was doing it, right? But that's narcissistic to still say, okay, these people I know have been suffering all this time because they got, one, they got whatever happened to them tragically. Two, they some of their loved ones passed away. Three, they get an attorney that steals all of their money after it's given to him to give to them and buys his wife, allegedly, these earrings with these people's money. If you cared even an ounce, it's the irony for me because Erica is mad at these women on this show for talking about this lawsuit. Right. She's mad that these people ask questions. But she think it's cool and that the people, the victims shouldn't be mad at her for coming on TV and saying, listen, I know that I didn't buy these earrings with money I earned, but I'm going to appeal it. So those people, because this is what you're saying, Erica, regardless if you think you're saying it or not, you're saying I'm going to appeal this judgment so that I can try to get get it overturned to say that, no, these are my earrings and it wasn't bought with these people's money. So therefore, you got to give me my million dollar earrings back. That's sick and sadistic. I'm just calling it what it is, sis. I'm calling it what it is. How dare you? But like I said before in another video, listen, the thing about life, those tables, they're always going to turn. And eventually it's going to be your turn. And this is the crazy part. You going through what you went through the past two and a half years and you saying, oh, it's just so rough and tough. And I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was hell on wheels. I wouldn't even, I don't know if I'd have made it out. And I love myself just saying, <laughs> I don't know if I'd have made it out. I probably would have been in somebody's insane asylum because that's a lot for the whole world to think that you have stolen these people's money and whatever else, think you're a horrible human being. That's a lot to hold on, you know, one person's shoulders. So I definitely think she's strong, but I think she's strong because she just doesn't give Let's be clear. She said last season or the season before, I don't give about anybody else but me. So be clear. She doesn't care about those victims. Not one ounce. But she has the audacity to sit up here on TV and be like, Garcelle and Sutton and Kyle and whomever else, I need an apology. For what? Girl, you need to go apologize to all those people that you sit up here appealing to get earrings back that you know you didn't work for. Anyway. Erica, you messing up my whole, listen, my whole drink situation. She messing it up. So I'm not even going to give her no more energy because she's, she's who she is. Um, but I do feel like Dorit needs to, Dorit, come back to the front, sis, and be that girl. Because that's when I liked you. I was like, yeah, Dorit deserves to be on this show. Even though she has a fake accent. I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, on this episode, Anne-Marie is having a Mother's Day brunch at her house. And listen, Anne-Marie. People run around America calling you 8.5, and that's mean, but it's, it's, girl, it's what you said was your badge of honor, so you can't be mad at the people, but I said I'm not going to do that because I'm better than that, so I'm going to try to call you Emery, okay? You you can come on um, Chanel's Reality and talk about it if you want to, because I'm a nice person, and I, you know, sometimes I could be persuaded, sometimes, because I'm not a drone, like I said before, she's not a drone, but you're going to have to have some evidence, so she's having this brunch, and it's like diamonds and cheap um, wine or champagne or something. I don't really drink like that, so I couldn't tell you. But uh, Brooke Ashley, shout out to the Brooke Ashley. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I have heartburn or something. My my throat is burning. Um, she said it was cheap, so <laughs> I'm gonna just roll with Brooke Ashley because she's like my sister from another mister. She doesn't know it, but she's like my sister in my head. Like Wendy Williams would be like, "Oh, you're my friend in my head." Brooke Ashley is my friend in my head. Um. Because she likes five-star hotels and room service. She's built just like me. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, so, okay. So, here's the thing with Anne-Marie. I don't really... I feel this way. I feel like Bravo gave her a bad cut. And they made her the, the enemy. Or the vi villain. And I feel like that was wrong. However, as much as she running around America talking about Crystal. You should... You owe me a thank you for being relevant. And all this kind of stuff for making you relevant. Crystal. Although they gave you a, a terrible edit, it saved your career, in my opinion, on this show. Because I think they're going to bring you back. I hope that they bring you back. Um, because in my opinion, had they had Bravo not taken and made her a villain. And listen, I'm not putting it all on Bravo because you did talk about Sutton's esophagus for a good eight, eight straight 
episodes and it's just like girl it's giving obsessed so i'm just saying um so i think that helped you but i do also think bravo if y'all listening and Anne marie if you're listening but i don't think Anne marie had anything to do with this whenever she went on some show i think it was on the e-network or something she was being interviewed and she talked about her how she was um adopted like given away like two months old or something. I can't remember, two weeks old. Um, and how she found out that her birth mom said, I don't ever want her to be able, it was a closed adoption. She didn't want her to find out or find her or look for her or whatever. And then she did look for her and her, I think she found like a sister and aunt, sorry, a sister and aunt or somebody close to her mom. And she was like, I don't, I don't, it wasn't a good situation. Um, but basically the door closed in her face and I feel bad for her. I worked in child and families services and it's tragic. It is because you do, it's trauma, you know, when you don't know, even if you grow up with the best of families because your family gave you to some other family and they, they, your mom or whoever felt like, you know, they would give you a better life. That's not always the case. Um, in a lot of cases, that's not the case at all. But for those that do that, even though you get adopted into the best family, it does something to your soul to wonder why someone gave you away. You know, you start feeling like, eh, was I not valued enough? You know, it can mess with your head. So I, I feel like if Bravo would have given us that story, and then I believe her her mom, her, her, her mom who adopted her, her mom passed away during this season, if I'm not mistaken. And if I'm wrong, Emery, you know, let me know, but, or let me know in the comments, but, and, and I apologize if that's the case, but I'm pretty certain that she went on that show and said that, you know, her mom was ill during this and passed away. I think. So, or maybe her mom was just ill and I'm hoping that her mom didn't pass away. I don't know. Um, so I feel like that could have been a good story. It could have been a, and this is the thing. It would have been honest and real, relatable. It would have, it would have endeared you to the people. And, but no, you just, you and Bravo decided to give us, we, let's talk about Sudden's esophagus for 15 episodes. It's just so stupid to me. Um, I think Anne Marie's figured out to stop listening to Kyle. I can't wait for the for the reunion because I hope I think Anne Marie figured out that Kyle is is the King Cope snake. King Cope, what is it? King Cobra snake? I said she is. Um, because Kyle Kyle is on a campaign running around America talking about she don't know Anne Marie. <laughs> she don't listen. Kyle is like I don't know Anne Marie. Uh, the read on here talk about how how much um. Her and Kyle are besties, and Kyle's like, and they sing on vacations. She doesn't know what's happening because Kyle isn't inviting her. Kyle went on on national TV and was like, or on the shows, and was like, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know the re We went on one vacation, and it was a pay for vacation by Bra or something. I don't know. She basically is Mariah Carey and Dorit. Kyle ain't nobody friend. That's why I said she's King Cobra. Listen, I'm gonna list off the people who Kyle does not like. Okay, they think that she did, but she doesn't. Well, Emery, latest person, Dorit, she doesn't like you either, sis. Because if you like someone that's... Because to me, I feel like Dorit's loyal to Kyle. My opinion, they swear they're sisters. But let's see. These are the people that <laughs> Kyle doesn't like that's on the cast. I said that Kyle hates. So Sutton, Garcelle, Dorit, Erica, Crystal, Mauricio. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't say she hates her husband, but... And how's he treating him right now? It kind of feels that way. Kathy Hilton and her husband. I don't know his his name, but I know they don't like him. Kim Richards, her sister. She, you have to because who goes on TV and, and out their sister for being an alcoholic? It's just it's it's shady and it's sad. Lisa Renna. I don't think she liked her, uh, Yolanda Hadid. Brandy, but I don't think anybody really liked Brandy. I only like Brandy because I feel like she gave a real element, but now I kind of feel like she's the most thirsty. Um, Lisa Vanderpump. She probably don't like you either, Teddy. <laughs> but Teddy drank all the Kool-Aid, okay? Um, so just Anne Marie let it go. Dorit let it go. Crystal shows up at because like I said, she's having a brunch. All the ladies are coming. Garcelle shows up first, but I'm just gonna go in the order that I put it on here. So I think Crystal looks gorgeous, but I think Crystal for the most part always looks gorgeous. She just has that kind of cool but cute. I didn't really try hard, but probably tried really hard. Thing going. Um, I love Crystal the most. I think because, aside from Garcelle and Sutton, because I feel like Crystal keeps it real. I know there are people that hate Crystal and she's a liar. And I don't think Crystal's a liar. I don't. I think 
people wanted to put her in that box when she said the dark comment and they want to try to chop this lady up and it's just why because she because you can't she can't give you exactly what it's like shut up especially kyle girl please sit down and don't ever get up in the words of tamar have several seats sis don't get up because you're a terrible human being how you've treated people listen look at how you treated uh denise richards about her marriage Remember, you were running around for a whole season, 22 episodes, talking about, we wish you would just be real and be honest. Sis, you ain't been honest with us. And I'm not even the girl that's saying that you need to tell us everything. I don't believe that. But if we're going to play that game, sit down, Kyle, and let's talk about all the people that you haven't been honest about, but you wanted them to be honest about their life. You sitting, you sitting in this confessional talking about how, you know, you don't want your daughters you, you wouldn't want your daughters to stay around for, for something and put up with something that you're putting up with. So you're not going to stay around. That's what you're saying about you and your life and your husband right now and your relationship. And how dare said and ask you anything. Meanwhile, you've asked about everyone's marriage. Be clear. So stop it. <sighs> um... So at this, at this brunch, like I said, Garcelle shows up. Um, she arrives to this Beverly Hills she she she. I like that one guy. He's back on the show. His she she she. I like him. I don't know his name, but he's apparently some really kind of like really expensive, probably very expensive party planner. Um, there's lots of food. The the food is beautiful. Garcelle's like this is exactly what we need here in Beverly Hills. Beautiful people, good food, alcohol, and what else does she say? Oh, and diamonds because that's the other thing. Anne Marie got right. She has some jeweler, I guess. His name was Jason the Jeweler. I don't know. I thought it was Jacob the Jeweler, but maybe that's a different part of LA. <laughs> the brown people out there. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, so they have all these millions of dollars worth of necklaces and jewelry there. I think that's fabulous. That's my type of party. Um, What else? Erica and Garcelle speak about and kind of really geek out about the diamonds and what, whatnot um, that they're not purchasing. <laughs> Cause they ain't purchased none of that. Um, and and Erica comes to the front and says, "Cry me a river about how you came to sit around and buy Chanel and one hundred eighty-two thousand dollar Python Cartier rings, girl. Like, have a seat." Um, but I did like when they were talking about like uh like I think Garcelle tried on a million dollar ring and then she gave it to uh Erica and then she said to Erica something like, "Oh um." Oh, if you if your husband buys you this ring, you got to give a BJ every night. And Erica's like, gladly. I thought that was so cute. And I really do like that. I have to give it to Erica. She can be very funny. And Kyle, as much as I can't stand Kyle for all the re obvious reasons, she will definitely give, she makes the fun, the, 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 the episode fun, in my opinion. She's really good at that. She's really quick and witty with her fun. Um, let's see. What else? Sudden, her assistant, Ave, or however you say his name. I love Sudden. I love her assistant. Because in my mind, I'm probably that white lady in my head a little bit. You know what I mean? Just like a, a really wealthy white lady who really just... She, Sudden is an enigma. She wants to be... So This is the part of Sudden that I am not. I am not a pick me. Okay? You need to come be... As far as I'm concerned, like I said, I'm an original. Why would I be a copy? I'm just saying. So it's like... You going you coming to be on my scene? It's not the other way around. But I love the fact that Sutton has so much money <laughs> that she could just be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm buy me a horse, have him chipped over here on a plane, you know, whatever. That's real money. I'm just saying, that's real money. Um, but I love her and Ave because I feel like Sutton probably likes Ave. And, and shout out to you. I hope you're a really good assistant. But I feel like Sutton and me are, are like in this way that. He probably is an okay assistant, but you really like him. So you hire him anyway so he can be around you. And, you know, I, I am that girl. I am that girl. I love a project. Just saying. Um, let's see. Oh, so at some point, so at some point, Sutton is talking about um, her date, which that's another, in my opinion, I love it for Sutton, but a very uninteresting part of the show for me. Um, but I'm happy for Sutton because she does deserve love, even though Sutton is probably very annoying it, to a husband. I could see how she could be, but I also could see the fun, quirky part of her. Like, I feel like if I knew her, we would be friends. Maybe we'd be friends because we, we are decent human beings, in my opinion. 
Um, but so Sutton is telling everybody about her guy that, you know, they she got to go on a second date. And I'm really happy for her if that's real. But I just don't understand why any real human being would think they could come on a TV show and find love. Except for that Rob lady. No, hold on, not Rob lady. The Rob guy, Boston Rob from the first season, I believe, of Survivor. Him and his girlfriend that they met on the island or whatever. And they got married. And I still think they're married to this day. And have kids and stuff. So, but that does, to me, that's one in a million. They're the exception, not the rule. Um, but Sutton wants to find love again. And I want her to find, I genuinely want Sutton to find love that makes her just want to get up every morning and be happy. Like, I I, I want that for her. Because she seemingly has not had the, that, you know, in her previous marriage. Um, but so she's happy to tell the ladies about how, you know, she got the second date and then he texted her or called her or something and said, you know, we really haven't, we haven't even kissed yet. And Erica immediately, see, this is why, these are the parts that I do like about Erica. She says immediately, what does Erica say? She says, um, <laughs> he wants a plow job. <laughs> Because I promise you, in this way, I'm just like saying, I would be like, not thinking that about <laughs> I would be, if I was that girl, like if if I wasn't married and all that, I would be like, thinking the same thing as saying, oh, he wants to kiss me. You know, like that. I would not be like, oh God. But I have so many friends. My friends are like Erica in that way. They'd be like, girl, he just wants a blowjob. He just wants to kiss. Like, and I, I wouldn't because I'm just, my husband says I'm green and kind of like, like I don't, I don't know. I, it's because I believe... I do my best to look for the good in others. I try to assume best intent, meaning even if someone says something snotty or shady or whatever, I try to assume that maybe they didn't mean it in a mean way. I try. I don't always get it right, but I do try. Because I think that, it, 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 listen, being happy in life may, keeps you young, in my opinion. Uh, Let's see. Oh, and so then, because first of all, Sutton, Ave. Avi or whatever, how you say his name. He has a roadie, which I'm learning. I think a roadie is alcohol for the road. I guess if you're not going to drink, like if you're going on a little whatever. And sudden, she's kind of acting like that one lady that I, I found. She was on the, the uh, Real House. I think she used to be on the Real Housewives of Miami. I don't know her name, but I know y'all know who I'm talking about. And all she does is drink. Like she does not drink, consume any other liquid except alcohol. But I learned about her on the girls trip with Candace and Portia and what's her name? Giselle. She was on there. She was there with her bestie or somebody. Anyway, you you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, I think her name Marisol. I don't know. All I know is she just only consumes alcohol and she's trying to figure out why her stomach hurt. Marisol, girl, come to the front. Because I, I can't. I'm not doing it today. I'm not good enough. Stop. Topic. Uh, and so while sudden is kind of like loopy with the alcohol because how they made her a whole thing full of alcohol before she even got to the party. She was lit before she got there. Just saying. So Erica's like, yeah, Sutton, let's go over here and buy something. Sutton, come to the front. I already told you in a previous episode or video. I am not going to be mad. I'm not going to be sad for you. I'm not going to, I'm not doing any of this. I'm not going to be emotionally attached to your pretend friendships with Kyle and Erica ever again. After this, after this season, because sis, you're older than me, okay? You're older than me, and you should know better. But I understand, and I have compassion for you, because for whatever reason, you're a pick me. You want people to pick you and acknowledge you, and I get it. Everybody wants to matter, so let me not minimize her in that way. We all want to matter, every single one of us. We all do, so I get that. But you have to trust people when they show you repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly who they are. Erica's not a good person. She isn't, in my opinion. And she's, it is not something I'm making up. Erica said, I don't give about anybody else but me. When she is talking in reference to people who have lost their lives, lost their loved ones, and all of their money. This is the type of lady you want to be friends with? Makes me wonder about you. I want to believe, like I said, I, I love to assume best intent. I try. So I want to believe that Sutton still apologizing to Eric and all this is because of who Sutton is, meaning she's a decent human being. And that because she's decent, despite how despicable Erica is sometimes and in her responses to things, she still wants to see the good in Erica. I can respect that, but I'm not getting your back anymore, Sutton, if you keep down this road with these people that do not like you. They don't, girl, listen. How many... 
How much more evidence do you need, sis? You don't want to talk about read everything that your husband gives you before you sign it. All of the writing is on the wall and you still refuse. It's like you're walking around with blinders on. I don't get it. But I am not getting your back anymore after this. I'll watch and, and you know, be like, oh, well, because because you you older than me. So you should know better. Um. So then there's another scene where Erica's still running around America. <laughs> And she's at this brunch, which, by the way, shout out to Emory. I do think the brunch was beautiful. Um, she's still running around in America and Beverly Hills clearly telling these people that, you know, they need to apologize to her because she she got some overturned. Again, it's the arrogance for me. So you're you're excited about getting something overturned. I could understand it. Even though I completely disagree with it, I could understand how if you've been pummeled over something that you didn't intentionally do, but you did benefit from. And now your husband's left you out to dry and they're suing you. I can understand how that could be difficult, right? Because you've been running around in the world, living your best life, trying to become Erica Jane and become a thing and it didn't work out. And now everybody hates you and they're blaming you for something that maybe you didn't do, right? And I think most people could say, you know what, maybe she didn't know or maybe she didn't want to know, whatever it is. You don't get it. You cannot be like mad at people because they don't want to say we're sorry for asking questions about a very, about a massive news story about your husband stealing people's money. That's what the news story is about. You're mad at them because they want to know? The world wanted to know. What are you talking about? Girl, Erica, come to the front. Girl, stop. Like I said, Audacity's must have been on sale when Erica was <laughs> I can't let her. Um, listen, Erica, go get your money back from the therapist, sis, because she is not going to be able to cure you. She can't. Because you've been in therapy at least since last year. And you still think that it's okay to come on TV and say, I need an apology from these people who thought that I should give the money back or thought that I should uh, have some empathy. You're mad at these people because they think you should show empathy. Empathy, excuse me. To people who your husband wronged? It's not saying you did anything. It's saying that you're a human being and you have feelings. But you said you don't anyway, so I don't even know why I'm going down that road. Um, what did I write here? Oh. Listen. Erica, your therapist, gave you that lie detector test and determined everything you think is a lie. It's irrational. Um, Cause Erica really just only cares about Erica, and it's just mind-boggling to me that she has the audacity to have hold a grudge against these women. And she basically went around to each woman towards the end of um, the brunch that Emory had, and was just kind of like basically telling them, sitting everybody down informally to be like, "You need to say you're sorry," kind of thing. And Garcelle was like. Listen, Garcelle understood the assignment. Garcelle's like, I'm not apologizing to you. And these are my words, because cause Garcelle wouldn't say it that way. I, I would say it that way. She never would say it that way. Because <laughs> try me not. Do I look like I have tried me on my forehead? Don't do it. See, this is why I probably ain't on TV. Because <laughs> I, I can't with the fake, right? But I I, I, I give my I give props to Garcelle, because Garcelle was like, no, I'm not. Listen, I don't want ill to come, to come your way because, and I'm paraphrasing, because, you know, we don't think you necessarily did anything, but you should pay those people. And I'm not changing it. It ain't changing over here. <laughs> so good, right? That's what Garcelle basically said. I'm not changing because you want me to. Garcelle refuses to be the drone that others have been for the past however many years with regard to Erica. I'm not saying you can't get someone's back. There are plenty of people in prison who've done horrible, heinous things and somebody got their back. We all need love, right? You know? And so I get it. Regardless of whatever heinous something someone did, we still want to matter. We still want to, you know, want someone to love us. So I get it. But what I don't get is how you want these people to love you and show you mercy, but you have zero mercy and you have zero love for the victims. That's why everyone is like, girl, all these audacity that you have. And it's so bizarre that you don't see it. But I see it because I've read the DSM. It's called the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. It's about mental disorders. I ain't saying Erica got a mental disorder. I'm not. Okay. What I am saying is 
there's a few of the, because uh, you know you got to do assessment when you're going to diagnose someone. There's cute things, you know, a few things in there that, you know, just saying, match her behavior. Just saying. Um, I didn't like that sudden kept apologizing, apologizing. And I get it. I, I, so here's the thing, like Crystal apologized to Erica, I think when they were wherever they were in Barcelona. And I, I do respect Crystal's apology because Crystal didn't say I was wrong for doing X. At least that's not what they showed. Crystal said, and I'm paraphrasing, but she said something to the effect of, I apologize that I contributed to your pain. And I understood that. Even though I think Erica's a terrible human being for what she's done and her attitude that she's had towards these people, these victims, I, I think it's horrible and it's heinous. Because it's just like you re-victimizing these people because you basically tell them, I don't give a shit. And not only that, she actually said it on the show. I don't give a by anybody else but me. So it's not like I'm assuming anymore. This is what you told us, Erica. Okay? So, but with all of that being said, that's why I like Crystal because she has the ability to be objective and say, although that is terrible, and I think you're terrible for saying it, and your behavior, behavior is terrible, it has been for a few years now, I still wouldn't want to add to your pain. And I get it because, again, I don't agree with nothing that Erica does as said regarding the victims at all. None of it. I don't agree with any of it. But I am a human being and I understand that there's only so much people can take. And I did. I, I remember posting like on Twitter, like, Erica, I, I don't agree with a lot of the things you've said and done. And you do need to have empathy. But I am praying that, you know, you don't. Because people don't get, people get online and they say all these nasty things. And some of them are well-deserved. Some of them are. However, I think people get this idea that it's just them saying it. And it's 9 million other people saying the same thing. And nobody, no matter who you are, wants to get up every day to someone talking about how treacherous they are. Even if they are, nobody wants to get up and do it. So I could understand that despite how despicable I think Erica's behavior has been and the words she said... I could understand how it's a lot. It is. It is. So I don't, you know, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if I'd have made it. That's a lot on your shoulders. And it's not even something you did. It's something your husband did, allegedly. So, but Erica just didn't make it better, which is why a lot of people don't care about what's happening to her, which is why a lot of people didn't care that they were saying whatever reckless things on the internet to her. Like I said, Erica, girl, this table's turning, girl. Listen, this thing about life is going to turn. It's going to be your turn soon, so, or at some point. I just couldn't with Erica. I mean, with, with sudden apologizing to Erica a thousand times. It just was so annoying to me. Um, Let me see. Is there anything else that I wanted to talk about? Uh, I think I basically talked about everything, but I feel like there's something... Uh, Else that I, oh, <laughs> so remember I was saying that Sutton was talking about, or she was sharing about her new date or the guy that she got the second date with or whatever. And, and, um, some of the confessionals were so hella funny about like the diamonds and stuff like that. And so, um, so listen, people were like, it's telling Sutton, you know, isn't that what you do? You know, on the first day, you know, you get a kiss cause you want to do it or whatever on the second date. And Sutton's like, Listen, this is why I love Sutton. Sutton is like, because I swear to you, this is how I think. I ain't never had an STD in my life. Be very clear. I, I know people that I know that have had some or still have some. Because it's like, you. if I say that at a table of people, <laughs> so, this is how you know they didn't have one. They don't say nothing. To <laughs> no shade. I'm not being shady. I'm just telling you what I noticed. I was like, oh, yeah. So I guess that, that just means you, you're like, I ain't saying shit. Okay. Um, but Sutton said in her confessional, I think she said something like, um, she ain't kiss nobody. So she has a health, uh, what's she call it? A health report. And I have not mad at Sutton. That's how I feel. Sis, herpes is real. Y'all seen that commercial? I have herpes and I don't. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Anyways, that's how I feel. I feel, I agree with Sutton a thousand percent. Yep. I don't want to kiss you until I know. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. Um, so that had me gagging, but it also had me gagging when, um, 
They started, oh, because because Erica was like, when Sutton said, oh, he said something about him. We didn't even kiss. And Erica said right after that, she was like, um, he wants you to give him VJ, right? I died laughing. I died. And then, because um, I was just like, that is so good, Erica. Good job. And then they go to the confessionals and Erica was like talking about her VJ. Really, everybody's talking about their VJs that they've given or whatever. And Erica's like, um, what did she say? I've never had anyone complain about my VJs and I don't even have a small esophagus. <laughs> I died and came back to life again. Um, and then I thought it was really funny when Garcelle said in her confessional, she was just kind of, she said, because they basically in their confessionals were talking about, I guess the more diamonds you have or the more this, that, and the third you get is has something to do with how good of a BJ you've given your husband or whomever, right? And so all the ladies in the confessionals are kind of talking about it. And Garcelle says, um, what did she say? She said, let's just say, I have enough jewelry. <laughs> so basically, she's given some really good BJs over the years. But then she shades Kyle because she said, uh, but not as many, as, not as much jewelry as Kyle. <laughs> Garcelle understood the sign. I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it when she said that. I was just like, listen, I died again. And then Kyle's being corny, but she's, you know, she's funny for her. She says something like um, she doesn't blow and tell or something. It was just, it was all kind of cute. I like see that's the part of it that I, I really do like. I like when they don't have to always be at each other's throat. I mean it's just have a good time. Y'all are rich or wealthy allegedly wealthy people except for saying we know she wealthy. Um, have some fun in your life. Uh, I feel like there may be one or two other things I don't want to miss that I put on here. Uh, I think that might be it. Oh, and at some point, um, Crystal and Anne Marie, and I may have said this already. I'm tired and delirious at this point. But uh Sutton and uh I'm not Sutton, sorry. Uh Anne Marie comes and gets uh Crystal and they want to talk to the side and you know, I guess try to figure everything out. And here's the thing. <sighs> I just don't even really feel like that was a real beef. It, it just, it was like, I don't know why even, I don't understand why Anne Marie had an issue with Crystal. Like, it just doesn't make sense. You lied on her, right? Crystal, you and Garcelle are having a conversation, but really it's you talking about sitting for a whole four hours. According to Bravo, the people who pay you, they the ones said that they told us to us because we only saw a snippet of it. But they said you went around the whole thing for like four hours talking about this lady esophagus. Your healthcare worker, it just is not a good look. It it reeks of thirst. That's all I'm saying. And then when Crystal's saying, after you basically said that Sutton is lying about whatever she has going on with her, her esophagus, and you said you talked to all of your people, all of the doctors and people that are in the industry, and they said essentially that there's one or two ways that you would get whatever Sutton has, either it's genetics, which Sutton said it was, and then, or you might have an eating disorder. And she basically was trying to imply that Sutton had an eating disorder and Crystal clocked it. Crystal was like, are you saying, it sounds like you're saying, or you're trying to, what is the word Crystal used? Insinuate, I think, that Sutton has an eating disorder. That's, that's reckless and dangerous. But they were all trying to, Kyle was doing the same thing. Oh, you know, Sutton drinks a lot. You know, she has, again, Sutton, more evidence of how that girl don't like you. She is not your friend. Why on earth would your friend want to put forth a narrative that you drink too much? You have kids. Can you imagine if you did that to Kyle? Please understand. There would be an emergency meeting at Bravo <laughs> immediately. If you running around America in your confessional saying that Kyle drinks too much, like it would be a problem. I promise you, you wouldn't be on the next season. I promise you, you wouldn't be on the next season because Kyle wouldn't have it. But she has no problem with running around America telling the world that her friend drinks a lot. And here go Dorit, because like I told you, she gave her her voice to Lisa Renna, the octopus lady from the, the Little Mermaid. Anyway, um, I feel like they went back um, to Kyle and Mauricio towards the end. Because I feel like in the next episode, they're going to, like in the preview, they're going to I guess that's the, I think this is the last episode coming up and her, you know, I hear, I hear people talking about, Oh, I can't wait to, you know, see the, see the, um, the reunion. I just don't think, I don't even think this last episode is going to be that dramatic. I don't, I don't, 
because I don't even think that them separating is such a big, I mean, I okay, let me say it like this. Obviously for their family, that's a big deal, right? Obviously for them, it's a big deal. It's not a big deal to me. I don't know Kyle. I don't know Maurice Hill. I don't know her family. So I'm not emotionally attached in that way to it. It's sad to me, right? If that is what's happening or it was happening for them. You know, I wouldn't want to be their daughters. And, you know, it's it's a tough thing. I do get it. But it is way, I just don't think that should be like such an over dramatized thing, in my opinion. And maybe it will be. We'll see. I, I don't know. I, I have to see the episode, but I just don't feel like it's, I'm just going to be like, oh my God. Like, I feel like there's been so many more really treacherous things like stuff that's happening on Potomac or things that happened on Atlanta or I mean let's count down the list the things that have happened in Salt Lake City in New York treacherous things have happened Jersey Teresa and her husband and I went both went to jail like it's way more things that I feel like are things to kind of like just be like oh my god so gripping TV so I'm I'm not I don't know I I, I hope that it's a good ending but I just I don't know I just feel like Bravo and Andy love to hype up things they're like oh my god it's the best episode and I'm just like bro Andy be quiet unless you're inviting inviting me you know to the Bravo come for free <laughs> sit down and be quiet I, I'm just saying um no shout out to Andy I really do like Andy but he's shady and those girls listen in my opinion quiet as is kept shout out to Funky Down Even I don't even like him like that but I know a lot of people use that that phrase I'm gonna use it here because I think it it applies um in my opinion, Andy is the shadiest of them all. He, to me, is equivalent to Erica. Now, he ain't going to say the stuff that Erica has said, but he shady as, please believe me. I remember on that, it was a the, uh, reunion with uh, Ramona on the Real Housewives of New York. And, you know, she really she just really didn't want to talk about whatever was going on with her marriage. And I get it. But you are on a national TV show. But Eric, but see, that's the thing with Andy. Andy never misses an opportunity to like check. And I feel like he did that. To, he did, He's done it to a few people, but he definitely did it to Ramona because Ramona knew she didn't want to talk about it. It's so super embarrassing for her. And don't get me wrong. Cry me a river for Ramona. She's right. She's a whole bunch of isms in my opinion. So I don't really care, but I'm just using her as an example because Ramona's like, uh, I don't want to talk about it, Andy. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not talking about shit. I don't want to talk about it because it's hurtful to her, her family, her daughter. Her husband at the time, whatever. And and um, so she tries to do this whole, like, to throw throw him off. She's like, well, Andy, let's talk about who you're dating and, and whatever else, right? Which, Ramona, you got to come harder than that, girl. But he just was so shady to her. I just felt like you have, no again, no empathy. Because he says to Ramona, and I'm paraphrasing, something like, well, I will talk about whatever's going on in my relationship when I agree to be on a reality show. And I was like, King Cobra Snake. Who says that to their to their to their uh, employees? It's just like it's 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 not the same, but it's kind of like a few seasons ago, or was it last season, season before last, where they're talking about Garcelle and this big accomplishment. She wrote a book and all this, that, and the third. You know, she's a Haitian mom who came. Her mom came here and she started a life, and they came from meager beginnings. And this is all in her book, and this is an accomplishment. And y'all talking about recycling that Rena didn't do and it's just again careless and he doesn't give a shit i'm just gonna keep it a book stop me when i'm lying at me andy if you bought that life <laughs> no i love everybody at bravo thank you guys for uh tuning in to another episode of chanel's reality let's get into the comments tell me what you think do you completely disagree with me about sudden do you are you still gonna have her back some people might not even like Sutton, so. But if you do like Sutton, are you still going to have her back if she continues to kiss Erica's behind and keep crawling up Kyle's? At? Like, I, I can't. Let me know in the comments if you guys plan to do that. Let me know what you guys think about Erica and her continued woe is me. Everybody needs to apologize to me because look at what's happened to me, 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 me. Even though she used to fly around the world in private jets and, you know, get the... She's mad because she can't buy stuff off. She can't buy Chanel off the runway. And I can't. I can't with you, Erica. Like, girl, get a grip. Um, what else? Talk to me about what you guys think about PK and, and his just obnoxious 
attitude about Mother's Day and how he's in London. And I don't know. I have a problem with PK being in London for 12 days. What are you doing? Please, unless there, you, I hope you're putting money in my account. Because if you are, then, you know, maybe, maybe you could stay over there. But again, I advise, like, if that's really what's going on. I know, Dorit, you know, you have kids and everything. And so you can't just be jumping across the pond over there. I do understand that. You got to have balance, you know, and permanency in your kid's life. But I'm like... You and Kyle, y'all uh, allegedly, y'all have me memes. Y'all are the real housewives of Beverly Hills, even though some people, they be acting like they got money and they don't have it like that. It's the real fake lies of the housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, but tell me, guys, what do you guys think about that? Do y'all wish the older Reed was back, the one that was like, Erica, you're not that interesting. Your cold is fucking ice. You know, I want that to read back. Tell me what you think about that. Um, like I said, what you think about pk's response about mother's day because i was just like that's shady what do you guys think about um crystal um this season what do you think about crystal and her beef with um really it's Anne marie that has beef with crystal if we're being honest um what do you think about you know her coming and giving a health update to Anne marie about whatever happened i thought i mean i, I guess i thought it was cool but i just i'm confused this is another confusing thank you of this beverly hills housewives because i'm like why are we thanking uh, Anna Marie? I didn't see anything she did. Maybe, maybe she did, you know, some uh, miraculous thing, but I just didn't see anything she did. But say crazy stuff to Crystal about how she, you know, she, you don't want her to stroke out of here. I was just like, what? Are you, who says that? If someone's in an ambulance? I cannot. So I, I, I missed it clearly because I didn't see this heroic. I need to be so grateful. I, I missed that that boat because that didn't I, that's not what I at least that ain't what they showed the audience that is not what I got because she acts like like Emory saved her life in some way I'm like she took her blood pressure and let's be clear blood pressure monitors nowadays you don't even have to do anything you just push a little bit so anyways I'm not knocking what she did at all I'm just saying Bravo didn't demonstrate it in a way that would make me think Crystal needs to be so grateful and uh have to come and tell her like oh you know I'm doing better or my doctor told me to do this. I, I don't I don't get it. Um, what do you guys think about Anne Marie now that you know a little bit more of her story? Do you wish that she would have told more of that story or Bravo would have showed more of that story? Or do you want her gone? I don't want her gone. I don't. If they let Teddy stay on for that long, I think Anne Marie can get another season, personally. What do you guys think about Sutton and her roadie? And 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 Ave, I love them. And what do you guys think about you know Garcelle? Because I, I kind of skipped over. She did have a conversation with her sons. That's another part that you know it's good wholesome TV, but I just don't care. Yeah, sorry Garcelle. I, I think it's good for some some people to kind of see different types of parenting styles. Because I know all the brown people in America that grow up with parents like us. <laughs> we was like, say what? You need some. You need some more freedom. You better free yourself up to the go free yourself to clean up the kitchen. <laughs> Free yourself to pay a light bill. <laughs> okay? Free yourself to take out the trash. Okay? Free yourself to pay all these credit card bills. Stop it. Give me, see? This is Black America. I'm, I'm Listen, I'm just saying, stop me when I'm lying. <laughs> anyway, guys, I ain't gonna hold y'all. I think, I'm sure there's something else I needed to say, but I don't really care. So, like I said, thanks, guys, uh, for tuning in to another, tuning in to another episode of uh, of Chanel's reality. I really do appreciate you guys for hanging out with me. Please hit the like button. Please share my video. Subscribe to the channel. Please hit the notification button. This is a free and easy way to continue to support my channel. And I really, really do appreciate it. So until next time, see y'all. Bye.